Manny Pacman Pacquiao has recently listed what he considers to be his four toughest opponents of his career. Now, there's no Floyd Mayweather here, but that might be because he's considering more so who pushed him hardest rather than who was the trickiest or most elusive. No prizes for guessing who won of those fighters is arguably, very arguably, his nemesis, the Mexican Juan Manuel Marquez, of course, who ended the amazing quadrilogy with that incredible knockout in December of 2012. Marquez's counter-punching style, his ability, while a bit vulnerable, while he had that gap between his guard that did allow him to get floored a few times, the way he kept adjusting his distance, the way he could make Pacquiao overreach and then fall into those big counters, it's just always made him a real pest to the dynamic Philippine. The other one is Eric Morales. Of course, Manny Pacquiao had a trilogy with Eric Morales. It went from losing it to very one-sided, of course. But Morales, when he first beat a prime Manny Pacquiao, I think you could say, certainly in terms of physicality, Eric Morales was able to be the tactical superior to Manny Pacquiao while having enough of the toughness and grit that was necessary to hang with Pac-Man over 12 rounds. That first fight was a pleasure to watch. I watched that uh, back in 05. There was a great undercard to it. And you could even say that Morales slightly skewed or made things closer than they had to be by fighting Southpaw crazily in the last round just to show that Mexican machismo. Now, Morales in the rematch degraded a little bit. He lost to that Zahir Rahim. He came back for Pacquiao again. He was probably on the downward slide at that point. Pacquiao was getting a little bit better. He won in the 10th round and then he blasted Morales out in the third. Who was better prime for prime? I don't know. I'm not going to give my opinion on that. That's a different debate. But there was a bit of a changing of form come the rematch. Nonetheless, Pacquiao did improve. And then he went on to fight the third opponent he names here as one of his four toughest, Miguel Cotto. Now, 2009 was the year that Ring Magazine rightfully chose Manny Pacquiao to be fighter of the year. He absolutely blasted Manchester's Ricky Hatton in two rounds and then brutalized Miguel Cotto near the end of the year. You remember the Cotto fight? It seems like a one-sided fight and it generally was, but... A lot of times in that fight, Miguel Cotto was imposing his size advantage. He was landing clean shots and he landed some absolute howitzers that you may forget because you see the Pacquiao when he lets loose with the pulverizing shots. You forget the damage he took. But I think there's a moment in round three before he floors Miguel Cotto, and he gets hit with an absolute peach of a left hook. We're talking about a real knockout shot here where the chin's in the air and Cotto hits him sweet. And Pacquiao just took it probably back when his punch resistance was a little bit better. And he took some other huge shots that got then lost subsequently in the fact that Pacquiao delivered a beat down. Physically, that fight, even though it was one of his very best prime fights, must have taken something out of him. And then the fight that Pacquiao always references in terms of having taken something out of him, the fight that beat the prime out of Manny Pacquiao. His 2010 fight against another Mexican, Antonio Margarito. This fight seemed, when I watched it, of course, 10 years ago now, late at night, when I've, over here in the UK, of course, I have to stay up for fights. So I stay up for this one. I've been falling in and out of sleep during the undercard. I wake up, I see Pacquiao just administer a beating and I'm thinking, that didn't seem like a particularly hard fight. But you can really miss the fine detail here. Margarita was so much bigger than Manny that it was just a hell of an effort to keep him off with the constant volume. You can 
burn your stamina off at the nub and reduce it when you just have those hellacious performances like Pacquiao did against Margarito. That effort alone must have taken something out of Manny. But there was a period in round five or six where the much bigger Mexican whacked Pacquiao to the body and you could see the extra leverage he could get on his shots with having much longer levers. He hits Pacquiao to the body with a huge hook and I do believe it breaks Pacquiao's ribs. This isn't evident at all when you're watching it live. Pacquiao skirts around with those fleet feet and keeps up the rapid fire shots from the southpaw stance. You think he's fine. But Margarita has busted his ribs and despite his own facial injuries, he continues to push forward. It must have been very difficult to keep it all together. They were all fantastic Pacquiao victories, or the, the, the one slight one he got over Marquez. But what do you think? Do you think he should have included Mayweather there? Or was he talking about different criteria? For those who really know their Pacquiao history, do you believe those four fighters to be the toughest opponents of the legendary Philippines career? Or would you have exchanged one or two? Let me know. For me, that sounds about right.